So I don't want to be like, abracadabra, you know, or like, Ugh. so <laughs> I thought, why not make it uh, creepy? Auditions are the bane of most actors' existence. The booking ratio is honestly depressing. It's no different for the A-list actors, although at this point in their career, a lot of them are just getting offered the part. But the hustle was real in those formative years. Let's take a peek at some of our favorite actors' audition tapes from before they got famous. It was about five and a half months, the audition process. Casting director Sarah Finn and her team looked at 7,500 tapes in search of their Spider-Man, and they met with roughly 200 different boys. Ultimately, the role went to Tom Holland because he was so different from everyone else. He was energetic, real, grounded, and full of attitude. He's a great actor, but being able to do a standing backflip definitely helped him secure the role. It's tough, man. It's tough. I'm not gonna lie. It's uh, unlike any process I've ever been through. The Stranger Things casting was looking for actors who had something in common with their characters, and for Eleven, they were searching for a girl who was not only willing to shave her head, but embrace it. Millie Bobby Brown faked her American accent the entire call, so they wouldn't find her natural accent a concern. My name is Millie Brown. I'm 11 years old. Finn Wolfhard landed the role with a blurry iPhone video that his dad took, and not only that, the poor kid was sick. I am Finn Wolfhard, I'm sick. You've gotta have some major talent for them not to just pass you right by for that. Dacre did the unthinkable to land his role on Stranger Things. He danced shirtless to Hungry Like the Wolf. Apparently, Zachary Levy looks for actors who are willing to be silly in their auditions because he needs them to feel comfortable acting like idiots reacting to nothing. It's not funny. You know why? Because I'm stuck here. In order for Stranger Things to work, they knew they needed a strong cast of kids, so the best casting director in the business was brought in. Carmen Cuba. The Duffer Brothers only had a pilot episode written at the time, so all the kids read from a similarly styled movie, Stand By Me. The kids they auditioned either came from Broadway or already had a few movie credits up their sleeve. Gaten Maserato did Les Mis at 12. Caleb McLaughlin played young Simba in Broadway's The Lion King. And Noah Schnapp, the youngest of the bunch, had starred in movies. Scarlett Johansson auditioned for the 1995 version of Jumanji when she was just 11 years old. She lost out on the part to Kirsten Dunst in the end. Could you imagine how things might have been different if she got the role? Maybe Scarlett would have played MJ in the 2001 Spider-Man instead. I am so lucky. How many kids in the world would pay to be doing this right now? There were over 40,000 applicants for Harry Potter, which was whittled down to 300 screen tests. Director Chris Columbus said, Dan, at his core, is essentially a really good person, and I felt that that's what Harry was. Daniel Radcliffe didn't need any Felix Felicis, liquid luck, to land him the role. He was just too darn cute. That's what's under the trap door, the Sorcerer's Stone. A lot of A-listers auditioned for the role of Allie in The Notebook. Jennifer Lawrence was too young, Reese Witherspoon, a bit too old. Jessica Biel had to do her audition covered in fake blood because she was filming Chainsaw Massacre at the time. Britney Spears was the second choice, but the director was worried about making a Britney film. Eventually, the role went to Rachel McAdams. And, and they were wonderful, but they were very irresponsible. Check out this tape of Robert Downey Jr. auditioning for a movie called Backdraft in 1991. No, sir. It's not gonna happen, sorry. He auditioned three times for the role. Brad Pitt and Keanu Reeves also auditioned. Ultimately, the role went to Billy Baldwin because he looked more like he could be Kurt Russell's brother. Jason Momoa is another example of actors getting creative to land the role. He did a haka chant for his Game of Thrones audition. Which are primarily done before war. I was unsure if I was gonna do it. I asked my buddy and he's like, yeah, you gotta do it, but it was weird. Check out this video of Jennifer Lawrence auditioning for a movie called Lullaby. In the end, the role went to Jessica Barden. Lawrence has been turned down for a lot of big name roles, like Twilight and Alice in Wonderland. We're so glad she was nobody's second choice for The Hunger Games. It was finally a perfect match. I'll destroy their stuff while they're chasing us. Selena Gomez was such a cutie with her little button nose. Her breakout audition was for Disney Channel. At the time, she was taking singing lessons, and she was obsessed with Disney Channel and wanted to be a singer and an actor. I want to do that. When I get older, I want to be both, you know, do like Britney. We're so happy that worked out for her. And me and my friend like to play around, so like, I'm Selena, we're watching Disney Channel. Matthew McConaughey auditioned for Dazed and Confused 28 years ago. 
It'd be a lot cooler if she did. He's still quite proud of that audition because he had no idea it would shape his future. Three day job for a summer hobby. And 28 years later, I still got a little summer job that turned into a career. This is Rose Byrne's audition she did for Get Him to the Greek, which, by the way, she nailed it. No, I know that, but I thought to myself, I just turned 25. This movie likely put her down the comedic path, as a lot of the movies she did following this were all comedies. It isn't hard to get typecast in Hollywood, but honestly, every one of her acting choices is pure comedic gold, and we can't get enough of it. That's just a metaphor. It means something that's uncontrollable, has momentum. For her Star Wars audition, Daisy Ridley had to perform an incredibly intense scene, and tears were streaming down her face. The director gave her a few small adjustments, and her performance had him saying, Oh my god. Get out of my head. Originally, Miley Cyrus was auditioning for the role of Lily in Hannah Montana. The cutest thing about her audition has to be that she did it with her dad, Billy Ray Cyrus. I just can't go, okay? They refused to cast her at first because she was just too young for the part. But she kept auditioning, and eventually, she landed it. Maybe by the time they finally cast it, she'd grown up just enough. I think it would be easier this way. Amelia Clark was auditioning for the movie Belle here. Whenever he looked at me, I somehow felt right in this world. She didn't end up getting the role, and it went to Sarah Gadden instead. But check out this cool comparison for their audition takes. Understood me. He understood me. She still did a fantastic job. Demi's singing voice has always been incredibly strong. This recording is supposedly from the demo reel she submitted for Camp Rock. If you won't let me give all of me. Which means she had to have been 15 or younger when she recorded it. Megan Fox's audition for Transformers honestly seems like it was a bit uncomfortable. Her performance was great, but the only thing director Michael Bay asked Megan when she was auditioning was if she could run and if she had a nice stomach. So I figured right, I'm going to be running, hopefully not naked, but I'll be running in a belly shirt, maybe. Canadian actor Jim Carrey is auditioning for SNL here. One of the staff said they didn't think the series creator Lorne Michaels would like it, so it was never shown to him. And honestly, Jim Carrey's got a special kind of humor that not everybody finds funny very gratifying thing in my life to uh, to have done a few characters that keep revisiting new generations yeah. of people. It's so inspiring to see some of our favorite stars audition for roles they never got, only to land that big break just a few auditions later, and see just where their careers took them, like Selena, who followed her dream to be a double threat. We're going to have to go back and rewatch Hannah Montana now, because we don't remember her being that young in the show. Whose audition brought back nostalgia for you the most? Let us know in the comments.